What's going on boys and girls okay so this video is so long overdue so long overdue i apologize but we're getting into it right so you guys know that i meditate and i think by this time like everybody's been harping on and on and on about like the importance of meditation and so we kind of understand how important it actually really is and it's not just something that just random like buddhists and people just do just for no reason like how every single human being just if you need to lift like is it important to lift weights? It's invaluable to lift weights. Is it important to sleep? It's invaluable to not have sleep. Is it important to be under sunlight? It's invaluable to not have sunlight. Is it important to have water in your diet? Is it important to drink water? Like you'll die without it. it meditation is kind of one of those things. And it's actually kind of one of those things. You know, like how you know that like there's so many people that you know, that we all know that just don't lift weights and or just don't do exercise. And they can live they can survive, but we all know that they're dying. Like they're kind of going, you know, like it's, it's all downhill. You know that you're not, if you're not doing anything to go up, you're going down. Meditation is kind of like that. People get away with not meditating just because it's one of those things that they think it's a luxury thing that if you, if you can get away with it, I'm doing well, I'm getting away with it, but you're really, 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 really not. Um, and instead of me trying to explain the importance of meditation, we're just going to go through this video, which is why meditate, change your brain's default mode from what I've learned. This is the best video that I've watched in all of 2019. And it's on meditation, of course. This is the best video that I've watched in all of 2019. All of 2019. Um, so we're going to go through the whole thing. And if I, if I um, remember things from other videos and stuff that, uh, or other things that how it's affecting me, myself, I will interject in, in the middle of this video. That's the whole point. I'm actually, so uh, what's my, my experience with meditation. I've been meditating for about like a full year plus at this point in time. And when I started off, I probably watched this video before. I don't even know. So I've watched a bunch of other videos before as well. Me, I don't know if this one was before I started meditating or not. So I already have a lot of experience with it and what my brain actually feels like. You know, when, when somebody asks you, how does it feel to lift weights? You kind of have an experience of what they are going to feel like you're going to feel sore you're going to feel doms you're going to feel this you're going to feel the pump so it's like i kind of know what the brain's supposed to feel like with and what it feels like when i do it and when i don't do it uh, and i did like a, another mini project that was like uh doing meditation on steroids which is like just do meditation for one hour straight as soon as you start off every day in the morning for like 30 days straight or 50 60 days straight i did that little project thing as well and I'll get into all of the benefits that I've actually felt as we keep going through this video. So this is the best video that I've ever watched. Let's watch it together. In the midst of being charged up by 20 masked men armed with rifles and explosives, Sally Adi was able to calmly and smoothly shoot down all of her attackers one by one. Sally didn't entirely grasp what had happened. From her perspective, the 20 minute skirmish lasted only a few moments. And when it was over, she asked, how many did I get? Not realizing she had successfully taken down all 20 men. This was very impressive considering Sally is not a sniper but a journalist and this was only the second time she had been in a situation like this. After all, this took place in a battlefield simulator in a training facility for snipers. In Sally's first run on the simulator, she panicked, was overwhelmed by how many enemies there were, and jammed her rifle several times. What made the difference was that in the second run, she had a transcranial direct current stimulator strapped to her head. I just want to give credit to this guy's <clears throat> like, just, just watch this video. Like this video has been so well made. It's so informative. It's so educational. The music just grabs you. It reels you in every single picture, every single thing. This guy has made the best video ever. Like it is so good, so good. This is basically a helmet that runs an electrical current through your brain with the aim of enhancing cognitive performance. In a February 2012 issue of New Scientist, Sally described being hooked up to the brain helmet as a near spiritual experience. She said that the thing that made the earth drop out from under my feet was that for the first time in my life, everything in my head finally shut up. There was suddenly this incredible Okay, this, um, okay, I need to mention this to you. You guys know how much plant therapy I do. Plant therapy goes into like, uh, it, it, what plant therapy does, <clears throat> what a good shroom trip does to you, uh, is it actually puts you into Zen state, like the Buddhist monk Zen state for someone that doesn't have an idea how to get in there <clears throat> because Buddhist monks have been doing it for 10, 20, 50 They've been doing it forever, right? So they know how to get into that state. That's what shrooms can actually do for you or if you do a good trip and you do it properly and stuff. And I'm not going to lie to you when I say this, this, this exactly what 
you th this is the perfect example. This is the because we've all seen this video. We've all this is from Stranger Things. This is exactly what happens. It it makes everything else go. There's like nothingness. There's absolutely nothing. There's it's just peace and calm and quiet and there's nothing. And you might think that nothingness is kind of lame or boring or something. It's really, really not. Our minds are always like the monkey brain thing. There's always something going on. Thinking about the girlfriend, thinking about the boyfriend, thinking about the husband, thinking about the kids, thinking about my job, thinking about my diet, thinking about my training, thinking about my muscle, thinking about uh, bills. There's something always, 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 always going on. The fact that your, your brain can kind of just shut down and think nothing, it feels so peaceful. It feels so calm. Like I really cannot explain it and nobody will really know until they try it and they get into this state. And that feeling of peace and calm and like nothingness is like something that you've never felt before. And it's the most golden, it's the most amazing feeling ever. So this is the perfect example, like the perfect picture that they could draw for you. Silence in my head. The purpose of the transcranial stimulator was actually to shortcut the silence. She said that the thing that made the earth drop out from under my feet was that for the first time in my life, everything in my head finally shut up. There was suddenly this incredible silence in my head. The purpose of the transcranial stimulator was actually to shortcut the subject into achieving an elusive mental state known as flow, a term popularized by Hungarian psychologist Mihai Csikszentmihalyi. It's a state of effortless concentration, optimal performance, and as Mihai puts it, it's the state <clears throat> in which people are so involved in an activity that nothing else seems to matter. And it usually occurs when a person's body or mind is stressed to its limits in a voluntary effort to accomplish something difficult and worthwhile. This is something that may be experienced by an athlete during a competition, a musician trying to nail a difficult piece, or even someone working on a project, trying to meet a deadline with only hours to spare. In his book titled Flow, Mihai describes how skilled people like artists, chess masters, and even surgeons, who when sufficiently challenged, will literally lose their selves in the activity. Like Sally Adi, all data irrelevant to the task at hand, including the sense of self and the chatter in the head that comes with it, cease to exist. Unfortunately for us, the brain's... Okay, so I'm going to pause there. I think we've all been in a state of flow at some point in time, somewhere, somewhere in our life where, where you look at the watch after, like when you're doing something, you get completely lost. And then when you look at the watch after, you're like, oh my God, like three, four hours have passed. Like I can't even tell where the time went. Flow state is when something is a challenge that's just enough for you that you can actually handle. So the challenge isn't too big that you get overwhelmed and it's not so low that you don't have to use as much brain power as you possibly can. And it's something that you really enjoy doing. That's what puts you into flow state. And I actually have a video on the right side, my gaming channel from like, uh, God knows how long ago and everything. But um, so this gaming channel is, uh, I actually had uh, like a bunch of different world records in different games, like back when I used to game all the time. So this game was Last of Us and I was one of the best players in the game. And in this game, I had like 55 headshots in three games as the second part. Now, <clears throat> for those of you that are young, that understand gaming and everything, go through this video and the other video. Like if you want, uh, pardon the cringe, there's going to be cringe because I'm young and I'm a gamer. <laughs> um, so yeah, but but this one, it was like, th uh, this is an example of pure flow state. Like you will see me not miss any shot, almost any shots whatsoever. Like it is mind boggling. And if you played this game, then you will, then you, then you're, then you will actually understand like what flow state really is and how you get into it. Um, so that's flow state there. And there's another, uh, tiny little thing on the uh, flow state that I actually mentioned and how you get into flow state and stuff and how weight training, uh, strength training, et cetera, et cetera, gets you into flow state, th which is, whoops. Please tell me no. Okay, which is this clip? Um, which I want you to. It out. I want you to. Uh, actually, you know, let's just watch it. It's one minute nineteen seconds. Just watch it. More than it is, or something. But that's kind of the reason why I like gaming. The other thing is, so again, the brain thing and the faster the hand-eye coordination thing. <clears throat> now, this is something that when I studied for ten years about strength and conditioning, strength is all about the central nervous system, right? Right. So it's really, so no matter what I'm doing here or like a squat or a deadlift or anything else, it's the signal from the brain that's going as fast as it possibly can to the different fibers and how fast can they contract and, and do the same thing. What I don't think that a lot of people seem to realize is anything that makes you do that is also training your central nervous system. Right. So you don't have to purely tax your cardiovascular system or your muscular system in order to tax your and train your central nervous system. So when you play like a video game and you're trying to get better at that video game, you're not taxing your cardio, you're not taxing your muscular system, you're getting entertained 
and you're also training your central nervous system as fast as you can possibly train it because you can only be as good as you can be so you're you're kind of also in a flow state you know what the flow state flow is state. yeah yep, yep. so you're also in a flow state because the amount of challenge is also the exact same as the amount of your capability see i i like that because uh i work so um, I think guy's a smart guy, eh? <laughs> uh, but basically that, that was me trying to explain how you can actually train your central nervous system through gaming without having to lift super heavy weights that tax your entire body and your central nervous system as well, like your muscular system as well. So that was a method of me to try and explain the, diff the connection between central nervous system training along with gaming, video games that we actually do. So, but that's again, flow state. I mentioned flow state in that, in that clip again. So let's get back into this and see if I missed anything else. No, I think- Default mode of operation is pretty much the old grunge house skilled <clears throat> people like artists, chess men, masters, and even surgeons who, when sufficiently challenged, will literally lose their selves in the activity. Like Sally Adi, all data irrelevant to the task at hand, including the sense of self and the chatter in the head that comes with it, cease to exist. Unfortunately for us, the brain's default mode of operation is pretty much the opposite of this enjoyable state of high focus and high performance. FMRI studies have found that there is a set of brain regions known as the task negative network or the default mode network default mode that are active whenever you aren't focused on anything in particular. This study is showing that the regions associated with the default mode network negatively correlate with task positive brain regions. Essentially, when you aren't focused on anything, there will be increased activity in the default mode network and less activity in the task positive regions. And the opposite is true when you are paying attention to something. The areas of the brain that belong to the default mode network are responsible for self-referencing, understanding other people's emotions, remembering the past, imagining the future, and general mind wandering. If you've seen the TV show Westworld, you may be familiar with the concept of the bicameral mind. This idea presented in Julian James's 1976 book, The Origin of Consciousness in the Breakdown of the Bicameral Mind, says that pause for half a second <clears throat> man this quarantine is really getting to me I'm, I'm like my indian afro is going out and i'm really pissed <laughs> i think i'm gonna have to go bald <laughs> that until as recently as 3,000 years ago humans were simple automatons acting out the will of the gods which was delivered to them via a voice in their heads this isn't entirely different from how modern humans operate even people not afflicted by a mental illness will acknowledge that they have a voice in their heads but it's not from the gods, it's their own voice saying, this shirt makes me look fat. I wonder if I'll ever get promoted. Eh, I bet my boss likes Jerry better than me. And I can't believe that thing that was bad happened to me. The default mode network seems to be what is responsible for this annoying inner narrator. This narrator is known in some Eastern traditions monkey as brain. the monkey mind. Monkey it's brain. just as it sounds, <clears throat> an annoying repetitive stream of information about yourself, how other people are thinking about you, and ruminations about the past and worries about the future. In the case of Sally Adi, her monkey mind finally shut up when she put on the transcranial cap and went into the flow state. Maybe unsurprised oh, oh yeah, the past and worries about the future. In the case of Sally Adi, her monkey mind finally shut up when she put on the transcranial cap and went into the flow state. Maybe unsurprisingly, the default mode network is great at specifically preventing flow. In a 2016 paper headed by Martin Ulrich, flow is induced by giving participants more and more challenging math puzzles. When the participants were in the flow state, there was less activation in both the medial prefrontal cortex and the posterior cingulate cortex. Both of these regions are key nodes in the default mode network. Along with conditions like being sufficiently challenged, in order to enter the flow state, you need to be actively focused on a task for a long stretch of time. What's interesting is that electrocorticography studies have shown that the default mode network reactivates within an order of a fraction of a second after people disengage from a task. The monkey mind is ready to spring to action the moment you stop paying attention. Now, not being in the highly enjoyable hyper-focused flow state is one thing, but another consequence of the default mode network induced mind wandering is simply a state of unhappiness. A 2010 mm. paper by Matthew Killingsworth yeah, people are not unhappy nowadays, eh? <laughs> There's an epidemic of fucking depression and anxiety and this and that and everything else. And that's exactly one of the other reasons why this is, this is like, I'm sick and tired of even trying to explain this to my mom, like who's super, she's a brilliant human being, but like, <clears throat> it's because it, when you see someone with cancer, you see someone with cancer and you don't want to do things because um, 
you can see them like you can see a person that's gone through chemotherapy you can see how frail and and dying and like crippled and everything else that they are like you can see the sickness and you don't want that sickness because you can see it so it scares you with like a mental image the problem uh, with the visual image the problem with the uh, mental health issues or like the the la- the all the issues that you get be- because of your monkey mind going fucking nuts because you don't have it control is basically mental cancer but because you cannot see it you don't even understand what it is so it's so people just let it go like in the wrong way like they should let it go by meditating but like they let they don't understand the importance of it and that's why people suffer so bad um and you will see like i'll try and maybe actually you know what, towards the end of this i'll try and like play a clip of me like training at like six percent body fat i'm telling you like meditation helps you so much because like anything that you would think that would destroy you or would hurt you so bad or something of that sort it becomes easier it, it becomes much easier to take more pain mental physical etc etc everything in fact actually i think physical pain actually comes uh, is brought up in this video so but um, I don't know how I got off on that tangent. But. ...is simply a state of unhappiness. Oh, unhappiness. A 2010 paper by Matthew Killingsworth and Daniel Gilbert describes how they developed a smartphone app that would randomly ping people throughout the day and ask what they were doing and how happy they were. Based on almost a quarter of a million queries posed to about 5,000 people from 83 different countries, they found that people are thinking about what is not happening almost as often as they are thinking about what is and doing so typically makes them unhappy. The title of the paper is A Wandering Mind is an Unhappy Mind. So what can we do about this? Well, meditation has been shown to be a great way to lower this activity in the default mode network and turn down the inner chatter that comes with it. Yale psych- this is this is why this is the best video ever because it kind of takes you through how the brain works what are the deficiencies of how people suffer and then where meditation comes in and where it goes it's just the it, it is the best video ever just psychiatric professor judson brewer and his colleagues studied practitioners of several different meditation styles and found that their brain's default mode network shows less activity this was true of course during meditation but there was less activity even when they weren't doing anything with meditation they actually ch- so if just to kind of give you like a different a muscle analogy, <clears throat> you get pumped up, of course, and you get bigger muscles and stuff and you get pumped up when you're inside the gym. But if you do it enough, 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 enough and enough repetitions and stuff, you get you just hold on to more muscles even when you're not training because you actually build up your hypertrophy, your muscles. Right. That's kind of how mu- meditation works as well. When you're in the state, in the state of meditation, obviously, you're trying to go like nothing and like focus on absolutely nothing sort of a thing or like focus on just one thing. Um, but the more you practice that in general, the more you're when you're not meditating as well, like your default mode network becomes more more stable and calm and like less anxious and everything else so that's the whole point once again Change the default mode network shows less activity this was true of course during meditation but there was less activity even when they weren't doing anything with meditation they actually changed their brain's standard mode of operation to be less distracted this seems reason enough to meditate but meditation has an almost laughably long list of health benefits it lowers your levels of stress hormones lowers your blood I want, uh, I'm stopping again and again, but <clears throat> I want you guys to know something. The number one killer on the planet is not heart disease. It's not metabolic syndrome. It's not high cholesterol. It's not nothing. Those things, the high heart disease, this cholesterol, etc., etc., are like symptoms that manifest in your body because of the state in which your body continuously is. If your state, if your body's in a state of continuous, like chronic stress, that's when things manifest in the body in the form of a sickness or tumor or this or that or something right so that's what this thing does this is like like i understand like people are like oh steroids are bad or oh, smoking is bad or oh, this is bad like yeah there are things that are bad and there are things that are good but no matter what you're doing no matter what harmful thing you may be doing or not be, may not be doing just reducing the amount of overall stress via meditation no matter what else that you're doing harmful will stress your entire system less because your entire system can take the stress less hopefully you understand that blood pressure this seems reasonable